So, Michael, can you give me some predictions looking forward five years? Well, one of the things that, that we see happening, and it's been happening quite a bit even, even as recently as this week, what we see is that the power of video is with the content provider, but it's also with the platforms themselves, with the distributors. And these are huge billion dollar companies that have ironclad programming agreements, and you've seen things happen over the past couple years with the emergence of Netflix uh, and Hulu and things like that, where you've started to see conflict out there in the marketplace between a Dish or DirecTV who play, pays huge amounts of money every year to get access to content, and you see digital components that may get it at a much lower price point. You've seen some of that start to come to fruition, i.e., Stars is not on uh, Netflix any longer. They, it was the core of their offering for the first couple of years, but at a price point that's so significantly less than a Dish or DirecTV that it caused some significant conflict that, it, uh, that ultimately drew that video back off the internet and has put it back into these homes. And you're finding more extensions, but I, I, I think the authentication piece is going to keep plowing forward, and you're going to have to put in your your satellite or cable subscription data to access this content. The days of, of, of these online environments having content at a much cheaper price point is going to continue to reduce, not explode, because the platforms are um, they're showing their strength and, and starting to, to cause content providers to rethink how they distribute. And I think you'll continue to see platforms play a very significant role, not just because I worked at Dish for a few years and kind of saw it inside, but you can just feel it happening um, that the content providers and, and these big legacy platforms are going to have to work together to decide the additional environments where you can watch this content. So what would you say is the future for a Hulu or a Netflix? There's a lot of content out there. These companies are going to have a lot of relevant content in their libraries that people will pay to go access. The ability to show content from last night or content um, from big hit shows that, that people can access, like I said, from, from these different price points uh, other than the typical place that they will. Uh, I think that's going to be very challenging for them. So I think they will have large libraries of, of content, but I think uh, the model is being challenged significantly right now on that in-demand content from last night from big TV networks that ultimately puts it in conflict. I think that's going to start to be reduced or the financial model is going gonna, is gonna to change, right? Because I think what you're going to see is the, the subscription points on Netflix and things like that. It's just going to go up and up. They were seen as, hey, it's $9.99 a month and my, my Dish or DirecTV or Cablevision piece is $100 a month. It's so much cheaper. You've just seen Netflix continue to rise as they get more content deals. And at some point, they're going to be the same. People are going to start saying, but I'm paying for all that content I don't watch. Well, that's exactly what they say with the platform that sits inside their house every day. I think the, the, the thought is coming together in the very new future that they're going to bump into the same issues every day. So along those lines, is this maybe a way of um, overcoming cord cutting? Or maybe cord cutting is only a temporary concern? So cord cutting has been talked a lot of, uh, talked a lot about for the past few years. We didn't see a lot of it when I was at DISH. In the satellite environment, our footprints continued to grow. DirecTV continued to grow at a, at a, at a significant, pay, significant pace. Just in the past year, we've kind of seen that first bump down. Um, and whether that's economy-related or not, it's obviously easier for people to access content. But you still can't get live sports. You, you still can't get live news. There, there are these these critical elements that, that make people continue to want to have a subscription at home for that TV on their wall. Uh, but you do see cord shaving, right? I think 
Uh, you do see maybe you're not going to have as many movie networks that you subscribe to because there's other places to get movies. So I think you may have um, bill shaving a bit, but I continue to believe that people will still want a core subscription in their home for those moments where you do gather the family around the big TV and you want to watch the big game or you want to watch that big show or that event, you know, watching on a laptop computer is great in a one-on-one -on -one experience, but TV is a very social environment and I, I think that's going to continue.